Hi everyone, this is the PLC Fiddle Shift Register Challenge Solution. And our challenge is to create a 16-bit register, shift register. The clock rate will be done with a self-resetting timer set for one second. So when the start input is on, the shift register will shift the bits left every pulse of the clock rate. Now if the input is on and the clock pulse is is on the first bit which is zero zero will be turned on the shift register and the, the bits shifted past the last bit which is 15 or, or 16 um, will be removed okay. so the reset input then we'll reset the shift register back to zero so that is our challenge so what exactly is a shift register well if we look at the um, diagram here you'll see here's my 16 bits and shift register will only move bits from or, or shift the bits either left or right in our case we're going to be shifting them left so it's going to bit 0 all the way to bit 15 and then we get lost on the end afterwards so if we there's no input it will move a 0 into the first one and then during the subsequent pulse then everything in here gets moved over and they all move over at, at once so if we look at um, exactly what happens in the register here is a chart that shows me my most significant uh, bit and my least significant bit of my 16-bit register and you'll see I have it coded as decimal so you'll see here as it as my one is in in the first bit and the second third fourth all the way down to the uh, 16th position or the 15th bit of our uh, register and it gives me my corresponding value what you'll notice on the values is every time that we shift it to the left we actually double the value of our decimal value so 2 to 4 4 to 8 8 to 16 etc all the way up to 32,768 which is the last bit of our shift register so we can also see that in our our calculator if you call it the Windows calculator go view and we'll go programmer then what you'll see is we've selected a double word so we can actually see a little more bits but there's my first 16 here and if I type in any number let's go 82 or 8192 you'll now see that I have um, just as it says here I have the this bit here on and what happens is if I multiply that by 2, I get 16348, which is exactly what we expected. And then we have the 14th bit on. Multiply that again. And we have 32768, which is the uh, 15th bit, 16th location. And we multiply that once more. And you'll see then the, the next bit of the next word then turns on and we get a value of six sixty five thousand five hundred thirty six so basically what we're going to be doing is just shifting those bits or manipulating the bits within the register or word of our um, PLC uh, fiddle so let's just close those down and we'll actually look back at the challenge so we already have our clock rate here and our clock rate if we look is set for my one second and it's pulsing right now and I have a couple of different values. I have my shift register. We have, that's where my value is going into. Now remember, PLC Fiddle will only look at the actual values, so the decimal values that we have in here. Then we have our start, our input, our reset, which are the three things that we mentioned in our challenge. Then we have some constants. We have a constant zero, constant one, constant two, and a constant Six, uh, 65,536 which is the, the last bit that we shift in so if we want to hit the start what we'll do is we will look at coils or sorry contacts and we'll put we'll use that for the start and we'll also need the clock rate so we'll hit the start and our clock rate so when that happens, then what we want to do is we want to do the shifting. So what we'll do is do our math, and we actually will multiply. 
and we'll multiply our shift register by the number 2 and we'll store it back in our shift register. So every time the clock pulses, um, we have our shifting error bits. So that's currently what we have right now. Again, the only thing we've done so far is every time that we have our clock pulse, it's actually shifting these bits in. Right? So we haven't shifted in our input yet, so we'll do that. As well as we'll have to look at the end. So when we shift past the number um, of our last one, which is 65,534, then what we have to do is um, subtract that number from our shift register. So let's just put that in. So we'll look at a compare. So if our shift register is greater than or equal to something bigger than what we have, then what we have to do is we have to subtract. And we're going to subtract the shift register, subtract our constant, and we're going to put that into back into the shift register. So basically all I'm doing is as it shifts off the end of the 16th position or the 15th bit, it will, and it goes into the next one, which would be the 17th position or the, uh, or the 17th bit or the, or the 16th bit, 17th position, it will actually subtract that value from it so that that ends our shift register. So that truly gives us 16 bits in our shift register. Now the next thing is, is to take a look at the input. So again, we go back to our contacts. We'll put our, we need a start, we need our input, and we need our clock. My start, my input, and my clock. So when I have my start on, my input as well, and my clock, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one to my shift register. So let's go back to our math. I'll take shift register, we'll add one, and store it a shift register. So what that's doing now is going to um, add one to our shift register, and it will it will actually move that one over as it shifts through. So again. All we're doing is saying when the input is on, put a one into here, and we put the one in by using an addition. Okay, so that looks like we have the shift register. Um, the last thing we need to do is do a reset. So let's go back to our contacts again, and we'll put in our reset. And in this case here, we'll take a move and we're going to move the value zero into our shift register and that will reset the 16 bits. So the last thing we need to do is try this out. So let's start this. Now our shift register is started. You can see our start conditions are, are active and now if I just hit my input on, you'll see now it's pulsing and it's moving that bit into or in through my register 32 and remember as it shifts it doubles and so what we should see is just before it gets to the 65 536 it then goes back to zero again because it clears that register and sure enough that's exactly what it did now the beauty of this is that if I leave my input on say for uh, two times or a number of different times. You'll notice that as the as these bits turn on and off, and if I need to know exactly what that is, let me just stop it for a second. I have a value right now of 1,472. If I look at my calculator, and we put in the value of 1,472, you will see my bits that are actually on within that 16-bit or the 16-bit word or the register that I'm shifting. So as it shifts over, it shifts over. So what I should see is my out, my uh, uh, eventually this will all go off to the end 
and then zero back out again. So we'll start that up again and you can see it still remembers exactly where it left off. It's still shifting through. So shift registers, very important for tracking and con uh, conveying things or looking at exactly what happened in the past and we can uh, typically use them to sense a product somewhere at the beginning of the conveyor or look at a value and then at near the end we can do something with that value. So all the links um, and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca and below what, uh, this video what you'll find is additional challenges uh, using PLC Fiddle. Now if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.